Before she aspired to higher office, leaving a legacy behind was very important to Sarah Palin while she was mayor of Wasilla. Um, she eventually settled on uh, developing and building a multi-million dollar sports complex for the city of several thousand people um, in a county or borough the size of West Virginia. Um, in the process, she managed to screw up the land deal uh, and allowed a developer to buy the land before the city could, yet she went ahead and built the sports recreation complex on top of land that the city did not own the title to. The title holder then took the city to court when the city tried to use eminent domain to take title to the land, and as a result, the city has had to pony up for more than $1.7 million in additional costs uh, related to this sports complex that would not have been there in the first place had she been able to negotiate a proper deal for the land. Because of it, because of this debt that is owed, the city uh, has a budget shortfall and is having to cut out capital improvement projects and increase fees and even consider increases in taxes even after she's left office as mayor. Topic number nine is again with the fiscal conservatism. As a result of Sarah Palin's years as mayor of Wasilla, the city is currently saddled with approximately $20 million in long-term debt, which amounts to, oh, about $3,000 per resident just in the time that she was mayor. The last topic this week has to do with the uh, observations and the opinions of those people that know Sarah Palin the best. And that would probably be the journalists and the editorial writers who have been watching her career as both a mayor and a public figure and a candidate and currently the governor for the past uh, approximately two years. And in the last couple of days, the two, two of the top newspapers in Alaska have come out with some uh, rather questionable statements about her qualifications. The Daily Miner in Fairbanks uh, opined that, quote, most people would acknowledge that regardless of her charm and good intentions, Palin is not ready for the top job. McCain seems to have put his political interests ahead of the nation's when he created the possibility that she might fill it. And the Anchorage Daily News wrote, quote, it is stunning that someone with so little national and international experience might be a heartbeat away from the presidency. In fact, the Daily News went around talking to leaders in Alaska politics and asking them what they thought of Palin. The Republican president of the state Senate, Lyda Green, said, quote, she's not prepared to be governor. How can she be prepared to be vice president or president? Uh, Lyda Green, by the way, is from Palin's hometown of Wasilla. She goes on, quote, look at what she's done to this state. What would she do to the nation? And another Republican, according to the paper, Republican John Harris, who's the Speaker of the House, when asked about her qualifications for vice president, replied with, quote, she's old enough and she's a U.S. citizen. Finally, there are some odds and ends about Sarah Palin that did not make the list this week for various reasons. First is the most recent news that Palin's 17-year-old daughter, Bristol, is uh, pregnant. Um, Palin and her husband released a statement in which they said, quote, we're proud of Bristol's decision to have her baby. Uh, but according to Ben Smith at Politico, unsaid in the statement is that Palin, based on her past views, would prefer that her daughter not be given a choice. If Bristol had any decision about having this baby, then Bristol is exercising the right that has been fought for and defended by pro-choice people and organizations in this country. And by the Palin's own words, they are proud that Bristol is a pro-choice teenager. There uh, is also the story about whether Palin's first child was conceived out of wedlock, um, but there seem to be some dubious reports about the timing of this issue and uh, whether it really matters. Also, those over at places like Red State are saying that the fact that she married the father of the child, whether or not she had him out of wedlock, and then proceeded to stay with him and have four more children, is a good sign of the strength of her values. Uh, either way, this is a, a rather dubious story itself. And also, there were the rumors going around that uh, Palin's fifth child was not actually her child, but the child of her daughter, Bristol. Uh, this story has also been uh, fairly well debunked. In a press availability in Monroe, Michigan, Barack Obama said to back off these stories about 
Palin and her family and her daughter. Quote, I have said before and I will repeat again, people's families are off limits and people's children are especially off limits. This shouldn't be part of our politics. It has no relevance to Governor Palin's performance as a governor or her potential performance as a vice president. So I would strongly urge people to back off these kinds of stories. You know, my mother had me when she was 18, Obama continued. And how a family deals with issues and teenage children, that shouldn't be a topic of our politics. I have to agree with Senator Obama here. Part of respecting choice, a woman's choice, a family's choice, is the fact that Sarah Palin and her daughter, they get to make these choices for themselves, between themselves and their doctor and um, the people that they choose to discuss that with in their family. And it's not really any of our business to interfere in those choices. Uh, there is one other thing that needs to be said, though, uh, that Reuters quoted a senior aide to McCain anonymously as blaming the rumors about this pregnancy on the liberal blogs. And uh, John Aravosis went to uh, great lengths today to explain how neither he nor Marcos Mulitsis nor Josh Marshall, three of the most prominent liberal bloggers uh, around, were pushing this story. All three of them were dubious or were questioning whether this uh, story should be followed. Now, I did a little homework of my own, and I did find that there were some blog posts um, around, particularly within the Alaska community, that were pushing some of these rumors that were throwing up pictures from various times and trying to show how the daughter might have been pregnant instead of the mother, and so on. And it made me think that um, there, were, there were some bloggers, uh, read as people who write a blog, who parried and joked about this rumor. And so I think we need a term that distinguishes reputable blogger, commentator, journalists like Erebosis and Coase uh, and Marshall from other persons with blogs or PWBs, uh, because any PWB can be bigoted, sexist, racist, unfair, partial, and or a jerk. And uh, if Reuters wants to accept the McCain campaign's attack that liberal bloggers are behind the trashing of Bristol Palin, then they might as well give the same weight to rumor or coffee talk or high school cheerleader chat in sourcing their stories. So that's all from Manhattan This Week. Uh, you are now prepared to go out amongst the unwashed masses and discuss the uh, Republican vice presidential nominee with some intelligence. Uh, I hope to be with you guys in Raleigh soon. Uh, take care and keep up the fight. One last thing before we get all worked up about whether Sarah Palin's first child was born uh, out of wedlock or whether her grandchild is going to be born out of wedlock or any discussion of shotgun weddings. Remember, John McCain was born out of wedlock too. Adam and Eve were not married.